Yeah. You know what? I like the plates. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Jay here with Homebrew Vapes. Today we're going to be talking about the Segeli 150 watt regulated box mod. Every video that you guys have watched of mine so far, this has been my mod of choice. Um, I did have the 100 watt Segeli, uh, not the plus, but the regular 100 watt. And I ended up selling that to my brother-in-law, help him get off of these things. And I'm telling you, right from the get-go, best money I ever spent is right here. So let's get down. I'll show you the packaging, show you what comes with it, get up close and personal with the box, and uh, we'll go from there. So the Segeli 150 watt vape it, love it, too true. Shows you here black, that's the color box I've got. And when we open her up, which I'm sure you've seen this before, hey, books. Has modus, warranty card, and I've already, uh, not this box. Really, computer? <laughs> anyway, um, not this box, but my previous box, my 100 watt, I had to send back, and they stood right behind their product and sent me a new one straight out. And actually, it was um, the one that had the adjustable 510 connector that you had to use a screwdriver with. When they sent me the new one, it was the updated with the spring loaded. And here is your user manual pamphlet, battery installation technical specs all that good stuff lock unlock <laughs> and the bad thing about it is but it's actually kinda nice that's about as technical as it gets it's either on off locked or unlocked and their card market survey so that is where it comes from now let's get down to the box big change or not really big change but changes from the 100 watt plus and the 100 watt buttons turn to black which I'm sure you guys have already seen and this button has changed as far as <clears throat> it's no longer contoured or conical uh, flat design up top and these little smudges and scrapes and scratches and you see is actually I still have the plastic coating over my screen there to keep it protected so that is not what it looks like after being used it's just the protective coating still on there. Now looking at the top you have spring-loaded 510 and it's a very stiff spring-loaded 510 and now as far as cons I'll jump right in <clears throat> this right here the way it does that 22 millimeter mod or um, yeah atomizers they all kinda dig in and then you've got your little air hole gaps for some of your bottom air hole configuration tanks and clear misers. You've got the beveled sides with the silver <clears throat> magnetic back. So much better than the screws that came with the first one. Two magnets. Nice and clean. They keep it pretty clean. Now granted, I have been vaping on this thing for about a month and a half, so it's had some use. And actually, for a month and a half's worth of vaping, it has held up very, very, very well. And a lot of that is, in part, this guy that comes with it. But you've got your standard battery sled and you notice it is in series and I got my batteries set up so right now A is on this side and B is on the other and that is one thing that is very important whenever you have a series box mod label your batteries switch them out rotate them every time so once I charge these I have three sets of these and my actually my number came off because it did say A1 but anyway, after you go through your cycle, switch it. B goes here, A goes here. Go through your cycle, swap it. So, and then cover plate, nice and tight. 
slide our case on nice and smooth and let's power up five clicks to power on Mr. Shigeli and check atomizer so what are we going to put on here well you guys are going to be surprised but I'm actually going to put on a iClear 30 this is an original iClear 30 <laughs> that I was vaping on about oh, a year or so ago. Now this thing has seen its share of abuse. But believe it or not, since this thing fires down to 10 watts, fires it with no problem, and vapor actually Sorry, I'm, uh, I don't have it up on me, but it's not just for your drippers or your sub tanks <clears throat> or any of those. You could also use a regular clear miser because this thing is good for 0.15 ohm all the way up to 3 ohm, and that's a 2.1 ohm build. Actually, it's usually 2.2 ohm in this uh, configuration, or at least it has been in the past, but and you see there it shows your volts your wattage battery percentage and your ohms that you uh, your ohms that you have on your build there so we're gonna go from this here and we're gonna swap it for uh, let's do the mutation we went from the low end of the spectrum to the top end as far as wattage now this guy 0.2 ohms. We're not going to want to fire that at 10 watts. Scrolls pretty fast. Only thing I don't like is once you get past 50, it stays with the 0.9. Like if you've got a point over here, it'll stay there until you get to 100. So if you're wanting to go to 70 or whatever, you got to go back down to 49. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you can go up. But once you get up past 100, it automatically goes in whole increments. Hundred fifteen watts. And yes, it does taste good at 115 watts even. And if uh, you guys remember. I actually did a video on this one. My Tiger Wire. But that is the one thing I love about this box. As far as versatility goes, it's about all you need. I mean, honestly, unless you're wanting to do the temperature controlled vaping, you know, with the nickel wire, the NI200 wire, then yeah, you're going to have to do a DNA style box. But for the, those who are just still doing acanthal builds, this is a way to go. Throw my marquee on here. And every one of my atomizers has fit this thing and fired first time. Oh, except we don't want to vape that one at 115 watts. <laughs> that one's more of a 70 watt vape. And that's just a standard dual uh, dual vertical coil I got on here. I uh, can't really see it that well. There you go. My marquee. And like I said, every one of my atomizers fits on here nice and flush first time. Fires right up. I haven't had any connection issues at all. Now the one thing you've got to keep in mind is that is a copper pen you have to clean the pen and those threads every once in a while just to maintain that good connection and believe me it will make a difference as far as your ohms are concerned if you let it get too dirty you'll start making bad connection your ohms readings will be off 
Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> go to my Delta 2. Seventy watts, point four ohms, five point four. Yeah, I think we can make that. Seventy watts on a delta two. Still pretty warm though. Take that sucker down about forty five watts. <clears throat> so that's pretty much it though as far as the box goes uh, I'm sure you a lot a lot of you have seen reviews for this thing um, but actually I was kind of surprised there wasn't as many reviews out for this box as I thought as I thought there'd be there's a lot out on the hundred plus and there's a lot out on the hundred you know when you see the IPVs and stuff like that but you don't see many Segelis the 150 watts anyway but I will tell you something this thing here I ended up, I only paid, um, oh, what was it? I think I gave $93 and some change for this thing. And I got it from a guy on eBay. And the name of his, um, the seller was Vapewise Charity. And the only reason I did it is 50% of his proceeds actually goes to um, the, um, oh, shoot, what's the name of it? <laughs> oh, Livestrong, sorry. The Livestrong Foundation. So, I mean, it, it is go, going for a great cause, cancer research, um, and very well priced. I mean, these things, I think, were $110 on, and up everywhere else I was looking. So, <clears throat> to get it at that kind of deal and still have the warranty, and he was a great seller as far as he took care of me. Anytime I had any issues on any products I've bought from him, he's always taking care of me right away. So www.sigilly.com eh, I don't know if I'm too big into that but luckily you really don't see it that much but I do like that it's kind of clean looking and as far as the box goes I do love the box I mean <clears throat> it's styled a little bit better even though all it is is just some beveled edges and some black buttons than the original 100 watt and I'm glad it doesn't have the little swirlies like I had on 100 plus, you know. But it still looks good. And as far as functionality goes, like I said, I've been vaping on this thing for about a month and a half. Have not had one tick with it yet, not one. Whenever the batteries get low, depending on what I'm vaping on, it'll tell me, you know. Hey, battery, check battery. Otherwise, I get great battery life out of this thing. I've got three sets of batteries that I use for this, and I change batteries once a day. So there's always a set just laying around, usually. And that's vaping, you know, at 100, 100 watts, 90 watts, 70 watts, all the way down to 40 watts. And I'm not going to lie, the majority of the time I'm using my Delta II, which I usually just keep around 40, 45 watts. So, and this has got the RBA in it, so it's my own build, sitting at 0.4 ohms, so I can vape it a little bit warmer. But even at that, 45 watts, 98% battery. I put these batteries in here uh, about three hours ago, I guess. So if that tells you anything. But of course, whenever you start doing these kinds of builds where you're sub omen, super sub omen, then yeah, you're going to eat up the battery a little bit faster, but surprisingly not as bad as you would think. So yeah, that's about it. Let's go back up top and uh, vape on her for a minute. Yeah, so there we go, guys. The Segelli 150 watt. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. I mean, as far as an all-around box, you cannot beat that box. As far as uh, consistency, build quality, I mean, no rattles at all. No button rattle like you normally get. Um, I've dropped this thing a few times. And they had an issue, and it's been pretty consistent as far as the readings go. So, nothing but positives for the most part, except for the scratches on the top, which 
pretty much I figure most boxers are going to have, you know, so it's not something that Justice Segele, I think, has a problem with. I think that's a lot of these boxes, unless it has like a Fat Daddy 510 connector or something on top, but uh, for these type of boxes where it's kind of flush mount, yeah, you're going to have that issue, I think. But they've been up to 150 watts, you know, when I got my 100 watt, I said, oh, I don't need 150, you know, what, I'm never going to use that. And then, you know, I get my Mutation X. They put it at 150 just for the heck of it, you know. And, it, and I'm not an all day 150 watt vape, of course, but, you know, it's there if I want it. So, do I need it? No. Do I want it? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a guy thing, but oh well. I'll take it. But, I mean, just to show you, this is on my Delta 2. Five watts, 4.3 volts. And it fires every time. Now we get down to my marquee, my baby. I don't know if I'm in love with this thing just because it's a marquee or if it's because it's just that good, but for some reason I just love vaping on this thing. I thought the airflow was going to be a killer for me, but actually it's uh, kind of just right. I'll leave it at 45 watts. And then I'll take her up to where I usually vape it. Which is about 65 watts on this one. 4.5 volts. Warmer vape. Killer flavor. I mean, seriously. I tried chimney coils. I've tried um, horizontal coil builds. I've tried different wire configurations. You know, like my Tiger wire. <clears throat> I tried uh, Clapton in there. tried um, just regular <clears throat> um, higher ohm, like a 1.2 build. And honestly, it's a .3 build that I have in here right now. And I get great flavor. And for the airflow that you get with this thing, it puts out a good amount of vapor. And that's all in what you build, of course. But that's just two of these little air holes. <clears throat> now, I know, because <laughs> I said the same thing. Whenever I was watching reviews on this thing, and they make it look ginormous <laughs> on their screen. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know, and then when I got it in the mail, I'm like, this thing's tiny. I mean, it's really small. But it vapes great. I mean, it's perfect. I mean, you get guys like Cisco and, you know, some of the other guys that put this stuff together, they know what they're doing. And they definitely show us in this atomizer. But we're not talking about this atomizer yet. That review's coming. So wait on that one. But honestly, that's about all I got for you on this box. I mean, there's not a whole lot to say about it. It's simple. There's not a whole lot of bells and whistles. About the only bells and whistles you have is you hold the up and down button. Locked. But, when it's locked, no vaping. Please unlock. Unlock. Back to vaping. Now, I could see... If I carried a purse, <laughs> that would come in handy maybe. Um, but most of the time when I'm using this thing, if I take it with me, I've got a little slot. I just sit it in the car. It very rarely goes in my pocket. And if it does go in my pocket, it's a loose pocket, like a coat pocket or something. So I've never had a misfire or an accidental fire. 
And I've heard um, one person say that the button's stuck on theirs, and I have tried to get this button to stick, you know, because it turns and stuff. I have not had this thing stick yet, not once. And I use it consistently every day, not one problem with it. So, do I give it a thumbs up? Two thumbs up. Would I buy this thing again? You betcha. And actually, I've been trying to get my friends <laughs> to get this. Um, one of my buddies has got a unregulated box mod. And uh, actually, now I think about it, I think I introduced this as an unregulated box mod. <laughs> I might have. If I did, my bad. But it's a regulated box mod. But anyway, he's got a uh, unregulated box mod with 318650 uh all in parallel and it's like I tried explaining to him with something like this you don't have to keep changing your build to fit what you're wanting to vape you can put one build in here that's a happy medium and if you want a cool vape with nice nice flavor you know you turn the watts down if you want to put you know build you make the clouds you turn the watts up you know so why not go this way especially with all the safety features and everything that's in there it has the, with this, you've got low resistance protection, because like I said, it only goes down to 0.15 ohms. Um, you've got variable wattage, you've got short circuit protection, so if you put your batteries ba in there backwards, it won't even turn on. And believe me, I've done it once. Uh, high temperature warning, if this thing starts getting too hot, it'll tell you and it won't fire. Uh, which actually, I haven't had that happen yet, and I've had some low builds in here, vaping at high wattages. And have not had that warning come on here once, not yet. So, um, also has a high voltage warning, but none of those have come up yet. I haven't had any of those issues. So, as far as usability, anybody could use this thing. Very simple to use. But I will say this, and I've said it before, and I'm sure everybody here has heard it a thousand times. <clears throat> Even using a box like this. You still have to use a safe battery. A high drain, lithium ion, 18650 battery. Not a cheapie. You know, just because it says 65 amps doesn't mean 65 amps. So do your homework, get it from a reputable, reputable place, and know your ohms law. If you're going to be vaping at 0.15 ohms, know how many amps you need. To cover that 0.15 ohm build um, and that's why I said you know I, I swear by Samsung 25 hours I love those things they work perfect for my builds they've got uh, great longevity as far as you know battery life goes they last me a pretty good long time and they don't take long to charge from completely not completely dead because I don't let it go all the way down but from out of the box in the charger three and a half hours and it's off and that's not a high-speed charger that's just using that uh, Nightcore D2 that digital 2 they got out um, but that's what I make my or uh, charge my batteries on but anyway yeah just make sure you're using safe batteries you know and I wish that these companies would put those on here I mean like this here warning only use two of the same brand and model of batteries charge both batteries to full capacity before use do not mix batteries and always make sure they are in the same condition before use or risk of or, uh, or risk causing your device to malfunction. And basically what they're talking about is, <clears throat> and this may be just a theoretical thing, but whenever you're doing it in a series, they have a theory that one of the batteries drains faster than the other, so that's why you switch them out between charges. You basically keep them even, draining even through the cycles. Um, have I noticed a dis difference with that? No, because I think I actually got my cycles off once on this thing, but I need a vape. Hmm. And all is right with the world. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, definitely. I would say go out, get you one, and have no worries about if you're getting a good product. I would definitely recommend this thing, and I would definitely buy it again. Um, I'm actually 
I wanted to get one of these for my wife, but she swears she doesn't need one yet. So, holding off, but I might get it anyway. So anyway, guys, I think that's all I got for you today. If you have any questions, comment below. Uh, if you like what you're seeing here, please subscribe. Also, check out casa.org. Fight for your rights to vape, guys, please. I've talked about it in my other videos, and I mean it wholeheartedly. You know, please. Um, thevapedom.com come check it out see what they got going on over there nice vapors forum kind of like a Facebook for vapors basically but uh, yeah guys hope you like what you saw and uh, until next time check you later